Greeting fellas, I'm your host, your navigator through the vast universe of machine learning. Now we have all heard about these fascinating ML models, some sorting images into categories like deciding if it's a fluffy cat or an adventurous dog. Others, well they are not into predicting scores you know, like acing a test. And let's not forget those elusive reinforcement learning models that are out there learning from experiences, like our own digital daredevil. Developing a model is like crafting a powerful tool, but here is the kicker. How do we measure its true prowess? We often hear about accuracy being thrown around for everything, but let me tell you my friend, that's not the whole story. Training them is one thing, but understanding their real world performance is a whole different beast. That's where evaluation metrics swoop in, helping us decipher if our models need an extra love or if they geared up and ready to face the challenges out there. In today's video, we are diving deep into the realm of machine learning metrics. We will unravel the mystery of these metrics used for evaluating different kind of models. So buckle up. We'll start with a simple accuracy, but as we progress in the video, we'll see a lot more complex metrics uncover. You might not have heard those metrics, but they are super important or super critical for performing certain kind of tasks or measuring certain kind of tasks. So let's get started. The most common one of these is accuracy, uh, which is which is just the ratio of number of correct predictions to the total number of predictions expressed as percentage. It provides a general idea how well the model is performing across all classes. While accuracy is straightforward and easy to understand metrics, it might not be suitable for all cases. Uh, so generally when you have a lot of class imbalance, uh, you uh, might not use accuracy because uh, it will give a wrong result. So the next one is precision. Precision is a measure of accuracy of positive predictions. So it answers the questions like of all the instances predicted as positive, how many are actually positive? So the formula is just simple, true positive, one total positive, which is true positive plus false positive. The next one is recall. Recall measures the ability of a model to capture all positive instances. What it means is that of all positive instances, how many were correctly predicted? So the formula is true positive, one true positive plus false negative. Uh, the only difference is in precision you use true positive plus false positive. Here you use true positive plus false negatives. The next metrics is F1 score. F1 score is a harmonic mean of precision and recall and is often used as a single matrix that balances both false positives and false negatives. It is particularly useful in scenarios where achieving a balance between precision and recall is important. So the next matrix for binary classification is the area under ROC IUC curve. Uh, it evaluates the trade-off between true positive rate and false positive rate across different thresholds. So just remember that uh, sometimes in scenarios with class imbalance, multi-class classifications and other scenarios, a higher area under the curve doesn't mean a good model. Especially when you are working with a medical imaging model, you might have heard two metrics that are used quite often, specificity and sensitivity. Specificity is the measure or the ability of a model to correctly identify negative instances out of all negative instances. Whereas sensitivity is just opposite. So sensitivity measures the ability of a model to correctly identify positive instances out of all positive instances. Sensitivity is nothing but true positive rate or recall which we have already seen. And specificity is nothing but true negative rate. So this is an extract from health or New York government webpage. They kind of explain it very clearly what's the difference between sensitivity and specificity with respect to the screening tests. Sensitivity and specificity are measures of a test's ability to correctly classify a person as having a disease or not having a disease. Right? Sensitivity refers to test's ability to designate an individual with disease as positive. A highly sensitive test means that there are few negative results and thus few cases of diseases are missed. So this is very important because if somebody has a disease, we should diagnose this as a disease, right? So sensitivity help a higher value of sensitivity will help in that. The specificity of a test is its ability to designate an individual who does not have a disease as negative. A highly specific test means that there are few positive results, false positive results. It may not be feasible to use a test with low specificity for screening, since many people with without a disease will screen positive and potentially receive unnecessary diagnostic procedure. So it's very very important that we keep balance of the two because first we don't want to miss any cases which where there was a disease and it was missed and similarly we don't want to unnecessarily provide procedure to somebody who doesn't have a disease and classify them as having a disease. 
So the next one is uh, methyl chlorination coefficient. Uh, it takes into account all the four elements of the confusion matrix. So like true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative, and uh, and provide a balanced measure of classification performance. Uh, in case of an imbalanced data set, this can be used because it considers all the four different aspects of confusion matrix. So the next one is Cohen's Kappa. Cohen's Kappa is a statistical measure that assesses the level of agreement between two annotators or in the context of machine learning between a model prediction and the actual level. It takes into account the possibility of an agreement occurring by chance. So Cohen's Kappa is particularly useful when dealing with imbalanced data sets or when accuracy alone may be misleading. The next test is Chi-square test. Chi-square test is a statistical test used to determine whether there is a significant association between two categorical variables. So one thing to be noted here, it is only used for categorical variables. It is based on the difference between expected and observed frequencies in a contingency table. Let's try to understand this with an example. Let's say we want to find a relationship between favorite color and people who own a cat or not. So we collected the data based on the contingency table. So you have the owns a cat or doesn't own a cat, the two columns. And then there is uh, the each row represent favorite color, uh, ABC. So then we generate the hypothesis or so in this case the null hypothesis will be there is no relationship between favorite color and owning a cat and alternate hypothesis will be there is a relationship between favorite color and owning a cat and then we compute the expected frequencies using the formulas on screen we compute the chi square calculations and then we look for the p value the p value if it is below 0 0.05 that means there is you reject the idea that there is no relationship so we have to be very careful with here so you have if the p-value is small we have evidence that there is a relationship between favorite color and owning a cat but if the p-value is large then there is not enough evidence to say that there is a relationship that means they might be independent let's say we ran a chi-square test and we realize that there is a relationship between two variables if you want to know the strength of the relationship, we can use something called Kramer's V-score test. The formula is pretty straightforward. It's basically uh, based on the chi-square computation from the computa from the contingency table. Once you once you feed it to the formula, you will get a value between zero to one. Zero uh, zero means no association between the variables, and one means perfect association between the variables. Another important matrix that is used to measure the performance of a classification model is log loss. Log loss.
build a model that predicts the disease in a certain category of that. So category zero means that there is no disease. Category one means there is mild disease. And the progression keeps happening till category three, which is the severe disease. So, so this is how the data set look like. You have patient ID, you have ground truth category and mod, a model category. So the ground truth category is the label of the data set. It is done by one of the physicians at the hospital. Uh, model category is the category that the model predicts. Uh, and this is uh, what I, I my model predicted. So this is how the data set looks like. Let's try to load this data set now. So I just loaded this data set. I'm going to read this column here. And the problem is that the last word row in this column is none. So I'm going to just remove that line. Uh, so now the data set has, let's see how many, 1500. So 1441 rows, uh, so 1441 patients. Now let's load the ground truth as well. So sim similarly for ground truth, there is the last row which is none. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. Now let's complete create the confusion matrix for this. So this is our confusion matrix and this is how it looks like. Now I'm going to, so we have everything there. We have the ground truth value, the, the model generated value category and the ground truth category. Now we're going to calculate how our model did, right? So, so from sklearn, I'm going to import multiple metrics that includes confusion matrix, Matthew correlation coefficient, Jacquard index, brief, pre-year score, accuracy score and others so first load our ground truth and prediction so i'm going to load these two uh, so ground truth represents our our true value and uh, and model generated value is the prediction now accuracy is calculated based on the formula that we discussed in our media video uh, so this is the accuracy score precision is calculated based on the formula we discussed so that is there the recall f1 score so this you can directly use these formulas available from or the, the function available from um, scikit-learn so one thing you have to remember this roc curve is not directly working on multi-level class so you have to convert this into a you have to do it for each category so what i did is run a for loop for each of these categories so it's going to generate me area under curve uh, roc uh, so a roc auc curve brier score and log score for each of them uh, and then matthew correlation coefficient takes the y true and y predicted so it basically doesn't consider true positive or true false positive or whatever specific values it considers the entire correlation matrix that's why this this is a great uh, great one if you don't want to con consider both record and precision at the same time so Zeckard index is also a very important matrix. So it kind of calculates the overlap or intersection uh, intersection of for the predicted value and the actual value. So uh, we're going to be using the actual available matrix from uh, or available function from scikit-learn. Now I'm going to load the micro average matrix. Uh, this is your precision micro average, recall micro average, M1 score micro average. Similarly, macro average for macro precision, macro recall, macro F1. Specificity and sensitivity, very important metrics. So I'm going to use the turn, oh, so it has to be turn matrix for true positive. So I'm going to use my original confusion matrix for getting the true negative, uh, which is the sum of elements in the diagonal and true positive in the, in the uh, the DONF matrix, it's from the confusion matrix as well. And uh, specificity and sensitivity, it's pretty straightforward formula, true negative upon sum of all the elements on the axis zero. Similarly, true positive upon some of the elements on the axis zero. So sensitivity is also recall. So you can directly use the recall value from here, which is coming calculated here, but that's fine, I'm using it separately. So it's I'm using the confusion matrix here. Chi-square test is another matrix. So chi-square is coming from your scipy library. 
and then the last one is the Kramer sv so once you have the chai, chai square test you can create the Kramer's v, you can get the Kramer's v score so the, what chai square test does we already know it compares uh, the correlation between different categories and Kramer's test is gives you the strength of the correlation or relationship so this is what it does uh, so this is the formula that we will be using the confusion matrix i think it has to be so let's see what what happens i'm not sure if this is gonna work especially this kramer's v score so let me just print it here okay perfect so we got an accuracy of 78 percent on from the model so it's not a very good accuracy it's pretty yeah it's pretty low but that's what the model is uh, but that's beyond the scope of this video then precision is there recall is there reference score is there then matthew correlation coefficient takes the entire metric so it is coming around 72 percent zikard index is 65 yodens index so you will see yodens index it has four four value five values this is for each class so two two four seven ten similar uh, so this is based on yodens index is based on specificity and sensitivity so it's based on the formula like specificity plus sensitivity minus one so based on these values we get the yodens uh, j index uh, similarly we have the micro precision micro recall micro event score uh, macro f1 score specificity sensitivity and uh, chi square kramer score is here so chi square is 3671 that's well t technically there is no i just wanted to show you how chi square actually is calculated but there is no reason to calculate a chi square here because there is no relationship between we are not trying to identify whether there is a relationship between class one and class two that's beyond the application right we are trying to find the relationship between the ground truth and uh, and the and the model result so it's not comparing the variable within but with the final value so that's why these values are there but this is how the the results are uh, yeah that's that's all from my side uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know in the comments if there is any metrics that I have missed, uh, missed, uh, let me know also know in the comments if you have any suggestions for the next video. Uh, otherwise, please do like and subscribe to the video. Um, and yeah, enjoy the rest of your day and talk soon.